Welcome to 10 free offerings and tools for providing lung cancer screening, referrals, survivorship care, or tobacco use treatment. My name is Merlene Tucker, and I'm here with my colleague, Jeff Bornstein, and we'll be running this Dialogue for Health web forum. Thank you to our partners for today's event, the Lung Cancer National Training Network, the University of Louisville, and the Bristol Myers Squibb Foundation. Now I'd like to introduce Celeste Worth, the moderator, as well as a speaker for this event. Celeste Worth has over 20 years of experience in cancer control and provider education and is the director of the Luca National Training Network at the University of Louisville. She is also a tobacco treatment specialist and master certified health education specialist. She was previously a co-investigator for the provider education component of the KY Leads Collaborative and the Professional Education and Training Manager for the Kentucky Cancer Program at the University of Louisville. Welcome, Celeste. I'd like to start very briefly by, for those of you who are not already familiar with LUCA National Training Network at University of Louisville, uh, and also certainly, you know, those who know us by LUCA, uh, I want to show that we have a variety of things that we provide, and there's no other organization quite like us. Uh, there's no one else out there on a national scale focused on provider education and training. And while we do have a lot that we provide directly to providers and other clinicians, we are also working a lot with partners and other organizations and coalitions uh, to help them in terms of their efforts with doing provider education within health systems and professional organizations and so on. Uh, I did want to mention just real quick because uh, I, I didn't get to earlier, uh, I also want to recognize our team. Uh, Connie Sorrell, Swap Meal, Stop at Games, and Karen Combs, uh, who have all, you know, been, played significant parts in what I'm sharing with you today. And I also want to add that we're very fortunate to have generous funding from the Bristol Myers Squibb Foundation for all of our work and efforts. So to jump into our subject matter, I think most people attending today are familiar with the need and the imperative to provide these resources and tools to a variety of audiences, but especially with providers, because uh, what we know for sure is that lung cancer is the leading cause of cancer death, and we now have a screening tool that's better than anything we've ever had before. But unfortunately, we're looking at an average of 5% of the nation as of last year uh, in terms of screening rates for those who are eligible for this screening. So we have a long way to go to take advantage of that, and we look at the barriers that have been in place for providers in terms of starting that process with referrals to have low-dose CT scan for screening done. And a recent study that was published just this past May really highlighted for the PCPs that they surveyed what some of their major barriers and issues were. And I've, I've highlighted on this slide those that uh, we really can do something about uh, that don't have to just be uh, left to the, the unfortunate circumstances. Uh, there are those that are certainly working hard on the EMR situation for better prompts, but our organization, along with GoTo Foundation and others, right now can provide education and materials that would really make a difference for all four of the other ones. Uh, the concern about patient refusal can be changed with the proper counseling and education and shared decision making that should be happening with patients about this exam. Uh, but the providers doing it or anyone doing the education needs to have the right uh, information at their disposal to do that. Also, the understandable perceived high false positive rate has been a concern literally for years now based on unfortunate misrepresentation at the time the first major national lung screening trial was published in terms of a misunderstanding about what's really been the false discovery rate of 96%, not the true false positive rate, which falls below 10% now with the use of current you know, millimeter threshold on nodules as well as uh, the usage of lung rads for follow-up. So uh, we, we really can get the right information to providers to set that record straight, and I know at LUCA we have tools that specifically address that and provide that clarification for a peace of mind on, on a, you know, a much better false positive rate than many believe is the case. And then, of course, time constraints. That's a difficult one to overcome, but if we provide the tools and resources to, to shorten the task, including 
a patient education piece that Angela will be able to discuss in more detail that they've made available to do the patient education about lung cancer screening exams prior to the visit, but saves the provider and others a lot of valuable time. And lastly, the lack of insurance coverage is a concern apparently, but again, we can convey the education that in fact, for the overwhelming majority of those high-risk individuals eligible for lung cancer screening, uh, the fact that there is the USPSTF recommendation uh, and tremendous coverage that insurance, uh, whether it be private or Medicaid and Medicare, uh, will, will cover all of lung cancer screening costs uh, with no copay or deductible for the majority of individuals who are eligible. So, word we need to get out. And so, first I want to share our most comprehensive offering, which is our LUCA CME uh, online course, which is divided into three lessons. Uh, so we really have a variety of subject matter in there for the entire lung cancer care continuum, from prevention and risk reduction with tobacco treatment, uh, all the way through with lung cancer screening, of course, and shared decision-making through diagnostics, follow-up, referral for treatment uh, due to current treatment advances, and the collaboration with treatment specialists and survivorship care. So all of that is in there, and we've made it a point to keep this really innovative, even before COVID and the, you know, influx that there's been of online education. You know, we knew that providers don't want to sit and read. Uh, so we made this video based, and it's something that they can uh, complete portions of at a time, do one lesson or all three. And we've kept it interactive, too, with, you know, challenge point opportunities during uh, the segments so that they can see, you know, what the, what they already know and, and find out uh, as they go through a, a lot of new information also from our really comprehensive resource library that's included with it also. So we recently did a major update on our lesson one, uh, and its focus is all about uh, screening, tobacco treatment, and shared decision making. So we, if you've already checked it out or it's been a while, uh, we really want to let you all know that we're, we're excited with some major changes that have happened to reflect updates and even new narration for that. So by all means, uh, please share the word about that offering or participate in it yourself. It's free and available to anyone. But for those who are interested in credit, there's of course CME and even nurse practitioner or family physician prescribed credit. So uh, beyond that, uh, I would say that it's important to share that we're really excited about the results we have from participation so far in terms of we're trying to change knowledge that then leads to behavior change. And in each of the lessons, we're seeing a significant change from pre to post test scores. Uh, and we see that grow as we get into lessons two and three uh, to the neighborhood of you know, over 40% difference. So really pleased about that. And we're also excited to announce a new partnership with the American Medical Association, who has asked to adapt our course for their EdHub platform. And the thing that will be so great about this is in some ways the course is been a little bit of a well, you know, kept secret, and then we're we're trying to get visibility for it. But they have uh, over, you know, tens of thousands of physicians that are already participating uh, with AMA as members and on their EdHub platform. That it makes it super simple for them to engage with the course on there. And expected you know, launch date for that will be perfect for January 2021. So just a couple of months away. And if, if you all are specifically interested about the release of this, I highly encourage you to just put your name into the uh, Q&A section for this program, and then we'll know to specifically contact you uh, if you just indicate, you know, AMA course uh, when that's released. But we'll certainly be getting that word out other ways as well. Next on the provider tools in particular, uh, we really have a variety of those. And so this is kind of lumped together as one tool in that we have the, the series of pieces that we were fortunate to have developed in partnership with us by the Harvard Law School Center for Health Law and Policy Innovation, or CHILPI. And those were done back last November, actually, uh, and are full of great information in terms of how you can access the various components of whether it be screening or cessation counseling or medications and the, the variety of coverage that may be out there for each of these. And there were actually uh, webinars presented for them as well that are available on our website as recording.
Okay, we had a little glitch there, but the next one is uh, codes for lung cancer screening. I know a lot of people are interested in these. Uh, we're on the cusp of maybe some of this changing when it comes to CMS, so we'll keep these items you know, updated as changes take place. And again, this is one you can find at lucatraining.org. Next, we have our really popular first-line FDA-approved uh, tobacco cessation medications chart. Uh, which is a lot of small print, but this is designed for providers. It's not for patients uh, or the public. It's, it's meant to be a one-pager that providers can look at uh, because we, in the years I have done provider education on tobacco treatment, it's been evident all along the way that they really haven't gotten a, a lot of training or education about uh, effective cessation therapies and really benefit from the information on each of the seven FDA approved meds available. So this is another piece that is on our website. And uh, what we're excited also to announce today is that we have a brand new lung cancer infographic designed for primary care providers. Uh, it certainly could go to anyone, but uh, this is one that uh, really kind of cuts to the chase for those who aren't interested in a webinar or an online course that may take an hour or more. If they, they just need to look at something quick to get the nuts and the bolts of what they need to know for themselves in their practice, but also what to share with patients, uh, we really made it a point to, to give the latest, most accurate uh, information in here, which also addresses some of those concerns that providers may have about false positive rates or about other risks or limitations that have been mentioned in the past, really puts those into perspective and uh, the low rates associated with them, and also, you know, how they can access other tools and really goes through everything from the, the screening subject, you know, down through the follow-up care and survivorship. So encourage you to check that out on our website as well. And, uh, and also, I will add on the infographic, uh, it'll be a link that can easily be shared. So, and, and it'll be kept up to date with any changes like those we expect in the coming months from the U.S. Preventative Services Task Force. So uh, that, that's one that we really hope that you would, you know, be able to just throw that link in an email to colleagues or other clinicians that you think could benefit. Uh, in that same vein, we have printed panel cards that go into the description of these things I've been discussing, whether that's our online course, Lung Cancer and the Primary Care Provider, or uh, those insurance pieces developed with Chilpy. And so if you would like some basically hard copy pieces of something to, to get out to the clinicians in your organization and something that could be maybe even part of a toolkit or what have you, then just contact us on our website with a request for these to be sent in the mail so you can distribute them that way as well. Next is our webinar series, which obviously if you're on here today, you're already taking advantage of, but we want to make you aware if you weren't already that uh, this is number six for us. And we've been very fortunate over the last year to, to have these with fantastic attendance, uh, with you know, over 4,000, not including all of today's numbers, and representation from all of the country and then some. So the evaluation that we do at the end of that is very valuable to us, and I'll take this opportunity to encourage you to please uh, take a few moments when this webinar is over to give us your feedback. Uh, and you know, what we've gotten so far indicates a, a, a tremendous significance in terms of knowledge increase from what people have gained from their participation. And the recordings, by the way, for those webinars are on our website at lupatraining.org. Um, our website, Perfect Segue, is something that uh, we're, we're really proud of, but I can say it because uh, it's, it was, you know, Karen Combs is doing that this has turned out so wonderful and has, has gotten a lot of response because uh, if you check it out, you'll see there's everything you could pretty much want there, an extensive uh, set of resources, articles, tools, and so on that's a searchable uh, database. I don't want to say too much too soon because I've got a few examples of that, uh, but the, the webinars I've referred to, both upcoming and recorded, as well as how to request technical assistance of any kind. And so a few examples from that. Uh, are the fact that you can search for the topic or type of resource you're interested in on there in the resource library that's updated routinely. Uh, also, a chance just to see, you know, what, what are the most common questions people have and how they can be responded to as far as, you know, the information from multiple sources. And then uh, also something that, you know, we're, we're in the stage of increasing are customized websites for entities, whether that be state coalitions 
or an organization or um, others who may want to take advantage of the fact that we can host a site on Luca for you that really customizes your information, whether that be your statistics as they relate to lung cancer and lung cancer screening and care, or it may be the organizations that uh, you want to highlight that you're working with with your coalition or resources that you have for your state and so on. Uh, so if you're interested in, in having a web page you can send people to with this information and would like our help on that, just let us know. And Karen would be happy to, to work with you on that as well. Um, and speaking of those requests, uh, certainly we have a request page that is where you can go to to request hard copy materials I'm talking about today or uh, for some type of technical assistance. We've been, uh, we're three years into our work with LUCA, but before that, uh, we learned a lot with what we did in terms of statewide provider education with the Kentucky Leads Collaborative. And we're happy to share, you know, those lessons learned all the way through uh, what can be done in terms of presentations and so on, you know, currently. So also the social media is something that we, we're trying to take advantage of and make it really simple for people to get, you know, immediate updates from us on. Uh, examples of that, of course, include Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. And if you haven't already checked us out on there, please follow us because that's how we can best get you updates, announcements, uh, the latest tool we've developed, uh, releases that have taken place because we don't just make posts about what Luke is doing, but what a lot of other people in the field uh, have contributed or have available and certainly, you know, want to get that out to as many people as possible. So uh, please, you know, check us out on there. And a specific example of a brand new feature that we have through social media is on YouTube. And uh, for those who are not really interested in the CME credit or CE credit and don't really have the time, uh, we have the great opportunity to just get basically you know, bite-sized snippets of information on all kinds of topics from segments of our course. And uh, beyond that, you can also see the previous webinar recordings that we've had take place and be able to access those full-length pieces. But uh, most of what you see in this graphic shows the items that are anywhere from one to three minutes long and just give you a, a, a short you know, video piece about you know, a specific area, whether that be stigma or, you know, clinical trials, palliative care, uh, the shared decision-making process, you know, uh, I could go on and on. So it's, please check that out with our LUCA National Training Network uh, site on YouTube, and we'll be continuously adding segments to that. So uh, I think that that makes for a, a nice way to get uh, a small amount of information to people if you'd like to share the links to those as well. And next, of course, we have patient resources that uh, we, we really make it a point to pass along uh, when, when we are aware of those from organizations like GoTo Foundation that has a tremendous amount of those. But I also want to point out a couple that we've had a lot of popularity with in that uh, we really consider these posters to not only be a benefit to the providers and the clinics, but to the patients themselves, because we have had these for uh, a number of years now and heard a lot of anecdotal feedback of how helpful they have been to have those on exam or waiting room walls. And when patients are sitting there waiting, they're noticing that there is such a thing as lung cancer screening with low-dose CT and that they might be eligible. And seeing the criteria really makes them aware of this and lets them ask the provider when the visit takes place about having this done. Because we know providers are extremely busy, especially in primary care, and it's hard for them to think of everything, certainly without you know, EMR prompts to help identify those patients. But if they self-identify through seeing that this is something that you know, pertains to me and I, I, you know, I think I could do and be interested in, then they could at least start asking questions about it that uh, fosters the conversation. And we have not only heard stories of uh, from providers that patients asked about screening and received the screening as a result of the posters, but even of those where an early lung cancer was found from that test. So um, in some cases, they've truly been life-saving. And beyond the one that we have for screening, there's another one that is on the benefits of quitting smoking. And we know that pretty much <laughs> every medical provider could uh, benefit from having this in their exam rooms and feedback be developed before 
uh, even producing this poster was that what patients who are, you know, even on the fence about quitting smoking benefit from the most are seeing positive messages. What would they gain from quitting? And certainly the short-term benefits that are within minutes, hours, weeks, and months are the most encouraging. So uh, this is also something that we could send uh, upon request if you want to go to uh, our request page on our website at lucatraining.org to do that. And a new item that we haven't offered yet, but uh, that we were looking to give out in person at conferences, uh, but we all know what's happened to those in recent months, has, has made these available another way as well, and that's stethoscope tags. And so you're seeing a close-up of that one there, which of course has asked me about lung cancer screening. And we think that this will really come in handy again as just that prompt uh, for patients who, you know, if, if we're still doing a lot of provider education uh, to get them to the point that they're knowledgeable and comfortable about it, then we know uh, certainly a lot more remains to be done with patients. So the, the awareness really may not be there, and this is a chance to foster that discussion. So, uh, again, we're happy to share these upon request. So let us know if, if you'd like to order one or more for uh, your particular work site, and we'll be happy to help with that. Uh, and again, if you you know just go to our website, you can you can make that order. I want to point out too that we have very valuable national partnerships, um, you know, most of which are represented here. And we make it a point to uh, benefit from them and recognize them and share their resources as well. Uh, due to time today, I was uh, only able to, to go into some of what we have available, but uh, certainly please check out what others uh, like the American College of Radiology uh, have available. They have just completed a fantastic podcast series uh, that is being released for Lung Cancer Awareness Month, and so I encourage you to to check that out as far as messages for clinicians about screening on there, but they have a lot more, and Angela will be talking more about that. Uh, certainly, the National Lung Cancer Roundtable, I, I, I'm remiss if I don't mention briefly that Angela and I are both members there, and, and our organizations are members, and we're involved with the task groups, and they have a meeting coming up, their fourth annual, that is open for the first time to others beyond invitation. And so if you're really interested in connecting with them and, and hearing some fantastic presentations with their meeting coming up the second week of December, you know, check out the National Lung Cancer Roundtable website uh, to get information about registering for that. Uh, but, you know, come, come to ours in terms of a portal because uh, we certainly want to point out that a lot of what we have on there are tools and resources from others, and we make it a point to, to keep that updated so that you have kind of a central place to turn to uh, to, to find a lot than, more than just from one place. So uh, please, you know, do that, and I want to thank all of these partners that are represented, some of them on our advisory panel, and continue to, to work with us to get the word out. So from there, uh, I'm going to uh, add one other thing in terms of here's our contact information. Uh, but with our, in case some of you, you know, are uh, maybe going to be close on time at the end of today's presentation, we are doing something different with our evaluation in that we always encourage people to participate in that optional one that will pop up as soon as our webinar is complete. But we especially uh, would like to hear your feedback today, and so we're making it. Uh, a little bit more interesting in that for those who complete that and provide their name and email address in the open comment section at the end to show that you completed it, we'll enter you into a drawing for a $100 Amazon gift card uh, for those who completed today's survey because we really want to hear what you have to share and, and know what your recommendations are. So please contact us at, at any of these uh, opportunities, whether that be email, uh, lucatraining at louisville.edu is our main one, and uh, we'll be, of course, taking questions after Angela's presentation. So uh, with that, I am going to move over to introducing her. I'm very pleased that we had the chance to have Angela uh, as a part of this today, and, and we're, we're really fortunate because I've had the benefit of working with Angela for several years now, even when her work was focused in Kentucky. And uh, when we went to uh, work on the Kentucky Leagues Collaborative, uh, it's, it's appropriate that her organization name is what it is because Angela Criswell literally became our go-to person for uh, lots of questions and for her expertise in, in a lot of key areas. 
so we're we're fortunate also to have a partnership with GoTo Foundation, and this is a perfect opportunity to highlight all they have to offer. So let me just go ahead and introduce uh, her with her background, and then Angela Criswell serves as Associate Director of Quality Screening and Program Initiatives for GoTo Foundation for Lung Cancer, formerly Lung Cancer Alliance, where she provides technical assistance to lung cancer screening programs to advance best practices and facilitates program engagement within the Screening Centers of Excellence Network. She's been appointed to the International Association for the Study of Lung Cancer, Smoking Cessation and Tobacco Control Committee, the National Lung Cancer Roundtable Tobacco Treatment and Implementation Strategies Task Groups, and the board of the Kentucky Prevention Network. She was recently recognized with the 2020 Timothy W. Mullet, MD, Lung Cancer Prevention Award from the Kentucky Center for Smoke-Free Policy, University of Kentucky College of Nursing, Breathe for bridging research efforts and advocacy toward healthy environments program. And previously, Angela managed the Kentucky Department for Public Health Tobacco Prevention and Cessation Program. She taught political science at the college level for eight years, has an MA from the University of Virginia, and is a certified prevention specialist. So welcome, Angela, and thank you again for sharing with us today. Well, thank you so much, Celeste, for that introduction, and I'm so glad to be with everyone today. Um, I am not sure how many of our audience today will really be very familiar with GoTo Foundation for Lung Cancer, so I'd like to provide a little bit of background. Um, as was already you know, indicated, um, Lung Cancer Alliance being part of the founding of this organization, just last year, the Adirio Lung Cancer Foundation and Lung Cancer Alliance came together to create GoTo Foundation for Lung Cancer. And with our two organizations coming together as one, we are working to change the reality of living with lung cancer by ending stigma, increasing public and private research funding, and ensuring access to care. By joining forces, GoTo has not only continued, but exponentially grown the work that Adirio Lung Cancer Foundation and Lung Cancer Alliance carried out to advance the cause of the lung cancer community. So this year, of course, we went virtual. But as you can see from the pictures on the screen, you see some of the many ways we have previously connected to the community through our annual advocacy summit, our Centers of Excellence Summit and Screening and Care Conference, our Lung Cancer Living Room Series, and many local events. And today you're gonna to hear about many of the services we provide that connect patients with information, with one another, and with you. And you'll see some of the ways that you can access these resources as well. And we do hope that today's information will encourage you to learn more about us at gotofoundation.org. I'll be touching today on four main areas in which GoTo Foundation has resources that I think will be helpful to you and to the patients that you serve. I'll be touching on our patient education materials, our patient support services, our Centers of Excellence Network, and our advocacy and awareness efforts. Our aim with our patient education resources is to be comprehensive, credible, up-to-date, and easy to understand, and hopeful. We cover every aspect of the disease from early detection through diagnosis, treatment, and long-term survivorship care. There are numerous one-pagers, brochures, and, and booklets, and also we have a comprehensive handbook for patients that want to have all of the latest information ready to hand in one resource. These are available in print, hard copy, um, and also can be downloaded uh, via PDF from our website. And here you have a sampling of the patient education resources that many of the screening programs that we work with specifically find especially helpful. There's a nodule management one-pager that helps patients understand what a nodule is and why and how it may need to be watched. We have a Why Quit Now brochure that is geared specifically to the screening population that explains the cessation options that they can consider. And we have, um, for example, a screening awareness brochure that we recently developed with a lower literacy audience specifically in mind. Um, this specific resource originates from a, a project called All Case, which stands for um, Alabama Lung Cancer Awareness Screening and Education Project. That is a joint project that GoTo has with the University of Alabama Birmingham O'Neill Comprehensive Cancer Center. 
Uh, I know one of the questions that was submitted ahead of time, um, ahead of today's um, webinar, was about the use of community health workers. And um, I would invite whoever asked that question, if they've joined us, to reach out uh, individually. I'd be glad to put you in touch with my colleagues who work on the All Case Project, because it does use a community health worker model to implement community outreach, to identify and address awareness and access barriers, and to build relationships with referring healthcare providers. And GoTo Foundation will be disseminating lessons learned and additional materials that are being developed as part of this project in the future. Our materials are available to our healthcare partners for free. Um, there may be limits on the free quantities of some items per order, but there's no limit on how frequently you can reorder. Um, so they can be ordered online through our ordering system on our website, or you can reach out to us via email at materials at gotofoundation.org if you have questions, uh, if you want to submit feedback, um, or, or for instance, let's say you have an awareness or an educational event coming up and you want to request an assortment of our materials without going through our online system and individually selecting each one and ordering each one separately, um, or if there's something out of stock on our website that you want to check on the availability and, and request to be put on the list to receive them as soon as they're available, just reach out to us via email. That would be the easiest way, and we're happy to accommodate you. Last year, we released a new whiteboard animation patient education video to help inform eligible patients of screenings, risks, and benefits, and to encourage conversations between patients and their healthcare providers. Um, and we're going to show you a brief excerpt from this video. Um, Merlene, whenever you are ready to start, you may do so. The good news is this screening test for lung cancer is quick and painless. It requires no needles or dye, Typically, your clothing can be left in place, and there's no need to limit eating or drinking prior to the test. Lung cancer screening takes about 10 minutes, and the actual scan only takes a few seconds. Here's how it works. A machine called a CT scanner takes 3D X-ray pictures of your lungs using a small amount of radiation, also called low-dose CT. This level of radiation is more than a chest X-ray, but is much lower than other types of CT scans. Currently, this screening test is the only one that can find lung cancer early, which allows for more treatment options to save lives. As with all cancer screening, this test is not perfect. Some cancers may still be missed. Some scans may show spots in the lung that look suspicious, but may not be cancerous. These are called false positives. Similar to moles on the skin, your lungs may have nodules or spots that are watched, but are normal or non-cancerous. When needed, your doctor may recommend additional testing to determine if you have cancer. Lung cancer can be aggressive and advance quickly between stages. This is why it is important to be tested annually until you are out of the recommended age range or for as long as your doctor recommends. Regular screenings will let your doctor see if spots in your lungs are stable or whether any changes over time may be more suspicious for cancer. So as you can see, um, this video is really intended to help build understanding of the screening process and provide key information to the patient to ease their shared decision-making conversation that they will have, hopefully, with the referring provider and to, um, to ensure that there's informed patient dialogue. We do have an accompanying brochure um, as well. Um, and the, the video and the brochure each stand alone that can be used independently of one another. There is a simplified Chinese um, version of the brochure translated and a Spanish version translated, and the video is also available with subtitles, simplified Chinese and Spanish subtitles. So as a whole, the, the video is very brief. It's about just over four minutes long. You can download it from our website. We have a link to our Vimeo site, so you can download a high-resolution format for easy access within your clinical practice, and you can embed it within your facility's website. And there is no charge for use of this video. We also have um, a lung cancer living room, which is an offering that helps patients, families, and caregivers access real-time disease information and hear of some of the latest discoveries from thought leaders in the field. We hold our lung cancer living rooms live, now virtual, of course, and they're live streamed on Facebook and YouTube. 
um, on the third third Tuesday of every month. They are recorded and the sessions um, are available on our website and our YouTube channel. And then on our website, we also have a comprehensive video library, including inspiring patient stories and specific videos about each stage of lung cancer. So there are numerous services GoTo provides to build and strengthen connections among all of those impacted by or impacting lung cancer. We are connecting the community of patients and caregivers with one another for peer support, connecting the community of healthcare providers with one another to share successes and further advance early detection and treatment options, and helping prepare and empower patients to connect more fully with their healthcare teams. So I wanna to touch on some of the patient support offerings that we provide. Our helpline is available through a toll-free phone number, also via email, or you can submit questions through our website. There at the bottom of the screen, you'll see a snapshot of our website with a little green tab at the side. If you click on that green tab, it opens up a form where you can uh, submit online your information to be connected with our GoTo Support Services staff. You uh, can see pictured two of our support services team, Maureen and Miranda, both of whom are licensed social workers. Uh, you can see them there answering the helpline during their transition to working from home. All of our support uh, staff that, that work for GoTo are specially trained to help patients one-on-one, -on -one, to guide them through the issues they're facing on their treatment journey, help them address social issues, help find answers to insurance questions, and connect them with other resources that are available to them. In addition, we have our Phone Buddy program, which is a peer-to-peer -peer support program, where we match patients as closely as possible based on stage, type, treatment uh, plan, symptoms, and other life experiences or personal preferences. My colleague Miranda, whom you saw pictured on the previous slide, coordinates this program and leads the efforts of the generous volunteers who serve as Phone Buddies. Patients who are interested in being matched with a phone buddy can reach out via that online form um, or call our helpline or email us at phonebuddy at gotofoundation.org. And Miranda will contact them, get to know a little bit about them and their preferences before she matches them with a phone buddy volunteer. Our phone buddy volunteers help in so many ways, sharing coping techniques, talking about their own experiences with treatment, working through difficult questions and conversations that come up with their doctors and with family members, dealing with anxiety, and just adjusting to a new normal. Um, when it comes to support groups, we uh, have the National Lung Cancer Support Group Network that was begun in 2009 by another of my go-to colleagues, Maureen Rigney, with the aim of bringing together the lessons and the efforts of various lung cancer support group leaders across the country. Through this support group network, we provide free technical assistance and tools to establish and sustain support groups. Uh, we work to educate and connect support group facilitators to share their lessons learned and assist with problem solving. There are networking opportunities and a quarterly e-newsletter with hot topics, and we do give out an annual uh, support group facilitator award. And we have a guidebook that is available also. We have a number of online communities that we offer um, through the Belong app. This is a free and anonymous app, and it is not just for patients and caregivers, but also for healthcare providers. It includes a general support room and also has a, has a, a membership area where patients can track their appointments, they can upload their documents, and access peer-to-peer -peer support. And then there's Health Unlocked, which, which can be accessed either via a website or via an app. And GoTo has a support room within Health Unlocked. And there are 17, I believe 1,700 other health communities within the Health Unlocked platform. And then, of course, with our Facebook and YouTube pages, we uh, provide online community during our lung cancer living room events. Uh, a little bit about Lung Match. This is a collaborative effort between the GoTo patient support team and our science and research team that offers three different services. Um, there's a treatment and trials navigation service, including in-depth conversations with a navigator to help patients gain a better understanding of their diagnosis and the approved treatment options for them. Um, there's clinical trials matching, where a navigator helps curate and explain a personalized list of clinical trial options. 
And then there's a molecular testing service, which we offer in partnership with Prothera. Uh, we help coordinate comprehensive molecular testing in collaboration with the patient's local care team. And then the navigator helps explain the patient's biomarker test report and navigate the patient based on that report. The lung match navigators get to know the patients that are participating in these services to understand their treatment history so that they can help personalize this navigate, navigation to that patient. When a patient is interested in lung match, there's, um, here's a little bit more detail about how they flow through this service depending on where they are in the diagnosis and treatment journey, uh, depending on what testing they may have already received, and the questions they may already have about their treatment and or clinical trial options. Patients or caregivers can contact the lung match navigators before or after their appointments with their healthcare teams to ask questions, discuss options, or get help with their biomarker test results. The lung match process is meant to enhance the patient's conversations with their healthcare team and provide additional support to them so that patients feel empowered and prepared to make decisions about their treatment path. The patient's journey through this process is personalized. As they learn more and, um, as, and as their treatment team makes decisions about their care, the lung match team meets them where they're at. The lung cancer registry is a patient registry available to anyone who has been diagnosed with lung cancer to help researchers better understand the disease and develop better treatments. And researchers also can set up a lung cancer registry account to access de-identified data. By participating and contributing their data, patients become a vital part of the solution to end lung cancer. So if you visit our registry website, um, you can learn more about patient participation opportunities, including most recently the Sexual Health Assessment in Women with Lung Cancer, or SHAL, survey that is underway now. Within GoTo Foundation's Excellence in Screening and Care Program, we have two designations, Screening Center of Excellence Network, which was originally created by Lung Cancer Alliance, and the Care Continuum Centers of Excellence designation, which was originally created by the Adiria Lung Cancer Foundation. These are now aligned as two distinct designations united by a shared vision and purpose to magnify best practices implementation and expand access to quality care in the community setting across the entire care continuum, from screening and early detection through late stage diagnosis, treatment, support, and survivorship. In terms of benefits for being a, from being a part of our Centers of Excellence community, um, our Centers of Excellence are listed on our website, our online directory. So when it comes to the screening Centers of Excellence, for instance, this directory helps patients and providers locate a screening center committed to best practices within their community in closest proximity to them. We have a private, members-only, peer-to-peer online community called the Excellence Exchange, which allows our centers of excellence to share successes and challenges and learn from one another in a secure, supported environment. We also provide technical assistance and peer learning opportunities through one-on-one -on -one contact, through webinars, through our annual um, summit, which, as I said, this last year was virtual. Hopefully in the future it will return to uh, an in-person center of excellence summit. Um, and we keep our Centers of Excellence informed and up-to-date on practice and policy developments and other news of interest. And then there are opportunities to participate in research, such as the Cessation and Screening to Save Lives study, or CASEL study, which is a part of the SCALE Collaborative. We'll be making many uh, other research opportunities available to our Centers of Excellence in the future. And there's a chance to contribute qualitative and quantitative data through our annual Center of Excellence Impact Study, which helps us better understand the screening implementation and the care landscape. Um, we, as I said, host um, an annual Centers of Excellence Summit. This year's virtual event was just a few weeks ago, October 29th and 30th. We hope next year's will occur in person um, again in October in Nashville, but we're prepared to pivot to virtual once again if needed. Um, and we also host webinars that we hope are timely and responsive to programs' needs. For instance, this year we hosted a series of rapid response webinars to assist programs in addressing the challenges of the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, for instance, we had an expert panel session with Drs. Doug Wood, Peter Mazzone, Deborah Dyer, and Ella Kazaruni 
who discuss guidance and recommendations for postponing and prioritizing patients for interval nodule follow-up and screening resumption. We had a, a webinar on telehealth across the lung cancer care continuum. We also took a look at ACR's return to screening toolkit, and we had a session on the changing landscape of pulmonary nodule management. All of our webinars are recorded, and they're available on our website under the For Professionals section of that website. And if you visited our website and had any difficulty finding our For Professionals section, look at the top of the website, the far right, and you'll see that little For Professionals tab. Unfortunately, it's a little bit hidden. We're working on making that more prominent so it'll be easier to find. And that opens up a whole new area of the website with many resources for you. Now, I mentioned that Center of Impact study uh, Centers of Excellence Impact Study that we do every year. Um, this is a data survey that for our screening centers is strongly encouraged. It is not required, but we do encourage it, and we've had very, very strong participation. This survey gathers real-world implementation data so that we can better identify key successes, challenges, and the opportunities out there, which, which are so vital for the continued advancement of screening implementation. Every participating center of excellence receives an individualized dashboard that benchmarks their program with other participating centers of excellence from across the country, their aggregated responses. And this dashboard can be used for the, um, a program's own internal planning, their internal messaging, and for quality improvement efforts. So if you are a center of excellence that participated in this year's survey, rest assured we're currently finalizing this year's dashboards and we'll be sending them out very, very soon. For programs that are looking to build or expand their screening and their incidental pulmonary nodule programs, we have developed a thoracic oncology business model tool. And this facilitates working with your hospital administrators to demonstrate a business case for increasing your program's infrastructure and resources. This business case demonstrates that investing in greater program capacity saves more lives and drives value. Our business model tool can be downloaded again, from the four professionals section of our website. And it is designed to be easy to use with built-in assumptions that can be customized depending on the level of input that you have available to you. If you have any difficulties, my colleague, Kim Parham, who was the lead on developing this resource, is available. And her contact information and how to reach out for assistance is also there on our website. In terms of our advocacy and uh, awareness activities, we have an, a national advocacy summit every year. Typically, it is held in D.C. Um, last year and in the coming year, it was virtual, it, and it will be virtual for this year. Our 2021 Virtual Lung Cancer Voices Summit will take place in March, and we have three days planned for learning about lung cancer research priorities, about the legislative process. It's an opportunity for lung cancer survivors and caregivers, family and friends to share their stories. And then we will host virtual congressional meetings with members of Congress and their staff. We do welcome healthcare professionals to participate. When they do so, when they join these advocacy teams alongside the many patients, families, and caregivers that participate, it further magnifies the power of, of those patient voices. Our advocacy efforts include not just legislation. I mean, we have many legislative uh, priorities such as preserving and increasing the lung cancer research funding funding within the congressionally directed medical research program. We are advancing the Women in Lung Cancer Research and Preventive Services Act. We're looking at veterans' issues and their toxic and care for their toxic exposures, um, and also preserving preventive services and lung cancer screening coverage. All of these are on our horizon. Um, and we're actively engaged in the legislative process around them. But we also are involved in ongoing regulatory efforts, such as submitting public comments to the U.S. Preventive Services Task Force recently um, regarding their, their draft recommendation for lung cancer screening. And we're preparing to request and provide comments on a new CMS, National Coverage Determination, we anticipate that once the final USPSTF recommendation comes out, we believe, likely by the end of the year, um, we anticipate that, that, that CMS will uh, open up their national coverage determination once again, re-examine it, and hopefully align it with the USPSTF expanded um, availability, uh, expanded eligibility. Uh, we also track coverage issues from private and public payers, collaborate with other national organizations to uh, 
pursue resolution of any coverage issues through any available regulatory channels. In terms of what this means to you, um, during the, the last comment period for USPSTF, and then again, during any open comment period for CMS, national coverage determination, we will provide talking points that healthcare facilities and other partners can use in crafting their own comments for submission. And periodically, we provide opportunities for facilities to join sign-on letters to policymakers and regulators. We also have Shine a Light, which is our largest coordinated lung cancer awareness event in the U.S. Underway right now, this year's our 12th year, with at least 44 states that have signed up to host Shine a Light virtual events this year. This year's theme for Lung Cancer Awareness Month is Lung Cancer, It's Personal, because this disease impacts people. It is patients, caregivers, friends and family, advocates, researchers, doctors, and healthcare professionals, professionals who all face lung cancer with courage and hope. So we want to elevate and spotlight the personal stories of all of those who are impacted. If you go to um, our website, go to foundation.org, click on the Get Involved tab, you'll find Lung Cancer Awareness Month resources like a toolkit, social media links and tags, shareable content, downloadable graphics, sample messaging, Zoom backgrounds and a Facebook frame, and many other resources. And there's so much more from our many partners. Um, and I want to make sure we highlight uh, all of the, um, the, the many resources available from key partners, such as the American College of Radiology. On their website, uh, the Lung Cancer Screening Resources page, there are helpful resources like their Lung Cancer Screening Economics and Billing Quick Reference Guide and a return to screening toolkit that includes the infographic you see there in the middle of the screen to educate patients about the resumption of screening and the changes made to screening procedures and sites during the pandemic. They have template patient letters tailored to where the patient is in the screening process and how screening resumption has been prioritized within the facility, reassuring patients if their repeat annual has been temporarily deferred, or encouraging patients to reschedule a previously deferred screening, et cetera, and there's um, a template letter for referring providers regarding the resumption of screening. And they also have a telehealth quick reference guide that looks at the expanded telehealth opportunities during our current public health emergency. And I want to mention Prevent Cancer Foundation. They've developed a terrific awareness campaign called Back on the Books that includes lung cancer screening among the other vital cancer screenings and preventive services that patients need to reach out to their healthcare team and ensure they get back on the books for these vital services. Um, they are working on a toolkit so that healthcare facilities can take this campaign and implement it themselves. So be on the lookout. And GoTo Foundation is hoping to partner with them to make this toolkit widely available to the many healthcare facilities we work with through our Centers of Excellence Network and beyond. I also want to mention that GoTo Foundation has been working closely alongside others, such as American Lung Association, American Cancer Society, and Longevity for many months now as part of a consortium working with an industry partner on a new national lung cancer screening awareness campaign. The COVID-19 pandemic has created many challenges, but this work is still continuing. So do know that we are all working together to help prepare the way for lung cancer screening to receive the national attention that is so long overdue. And in closing, why we do what we do, each and every day, the work that we do is fueled by the patients and their families and caregivers who reach out to us. And here are just a couple that are highlighted, uh, individuals who have graciously shared their stories so that others can be inspired by them. We've highlighted Julio, who used our helpline and phone buddy program and whose story we highlight on our veterans page. And also Ron on the right, who shared this beautiful quote, the ability to join a community of like-minded people going through the same daily struggle and share our experiences and opportunities is so valuable in our effort to stay motivated and uplifted. And Ron has now become a phone buddy through our program. And here is my contact information. As I said, if you have any difficulty finding any of these resources on our website, please do reach out, and I'm glad to assist you or connect you with a colleague who can also assist you. And thank you, Celeste. I'll pass it back to you. Thank you so much, Angela. Wow. See, everybody knows I was telling the truth. You had a whole lot to offer, and we really hope that the combination of, of all that's been showcased here today is 
especially beneficial to not only those participating, but those that you all can share them with. Um, I think that uh, Angela is right in that there's maybe a lot of people who still don't know about either go to Foundation for Lung Cancer or even Luca National Training Network. So uh, by all means, uh, we're, we're interested to hear from you all. Now we have a couple of minutes left for questions. And uh, I, I will say that there's one that is specifically for you, Angela, right off uh, the top here. Do you have any data for incidental pulmonary nodule programs? Um, I don't have comprehensive data yet, um, but we do have many of the programs that we work with through our Care Continuum Centers of Excellence who have submitted data on their incidental pulmonary nodule programs. If you reach out to me, I would be glad to connect you with Kim Parham, um, who also leads our efforts in this regard. Um, this has become very recently one of our core priorities, is assisting programs in building out their capacity for managing incidental pulmonary nodules and streamlining effort, efforts to ensure that patients don't fall through the cracks. So do be on the lookout. This is something that we would definitely want to elevate and make sure that the available data gets out there to help uh, support programs that are, um, that are building their capacity in that way. That's great. And I know that we've got some other good information coming uh, from committee work that's been done with the ACR and the National Lung Cancer Roundtable. So, uh, we'll, we'll be passing some of that along, too, in terms of incidental findings and uh, follow-up and management and so on. So uh, you've, you've heard both of us mention the change in the USPSTF criteria that's expected soon. And uh, I know that all of us will be adapting our materials and uh, our educational offerings and so forth to reflect that accordingly. Uh, so keep an ear and eye out for what we can share where that's concerned, too, because there's going to be a lot of new information to get out to everybody where that's concerned. And so other questions at this time, uh, I would say we've had one submitted in advance uh, that said, how can we make physicians and their staff understand the importance of getting a patient's correct smoking history? Physicians now are using the minimum 30-pack year when the patient has more than a 30-pack smoking history, and I would say to that, you're right, it's important that that be documented accurately, and that's been the most challenging piece for uh, EMRs to incorporate because it's pretty straightforward when you look at uh, someone's quit status or current as being a current smoker or tobacco user and also their age, but it's the pack years that are challenging, and so there's actually smoking uh, pack calculators online. Uh, and certainly that may help to, you know, share, and, and we can also provide that to you via leukotraining.org, uh, ones like that, that if that could be sent out to the providers in your system or your organization, that might remind them uh, that it's important to have that calculation updated and, and accurate and, you know, how they can most easily do that. Um, let's see, it looks like we uh, are out of time, so um, any other questions that we've received, we'll be happy to respond to afterwards. And thank you all so much for participating with us today. Uh, I would like to thank our sponsors. Um, I don't know if, Merlene, you need to move that uh, to our sponsor slide, but uh, certainly thankful to uh, Bristol Myers Good Foundation, again, for their support, and our partner, Go to Foundation for Lung Cancer. Thank you for uh, your participation and the information about today's slides and recording from the webinar will be available next week. Everybody have a great afternoon. Take care. Bye-bye.